Satoshi Nakamoto, the mysterious creator of Bitcoin, could become the world's richest person, and we may not even get to know who they are. But there are a handful of likely candidates, and I'll discuss them later on in this video, but in order to understand how this all happened, let's dig into the history of Bitcoin and Satoshi Nakamoto. It all began with the cypherpunk movement from the 80s and 90s, which mainly consisted of computer scientists advocating for cryptography, privacy-preserving technologies, and anonymous payment systems beyond the control of any government. Many of the most important developments leading up to Bitcoin came from these cypherpunks. One of them was David Chom's Blind Signatures, which led to the creation of Digicash in 1989, which was later called eCash and allowed for anonymous transfers of digital currency over the internet, but this never took off. In 1997, Adam Back created a version of the proof of work mechanism, which is currently used in Bitcoin, for what he made called Hashcash, which was a concept for preventing spam emails by requiring computers to do some amount of computation so that they couldn't just send out mass numbers of emails. Wei Dai's B Money cryptocurrency had aspects that were very similar to Bitcoin, but then there's also Nick Szabo, who pioneered smart contracts in the 1990s and then started Bitgold, but failed to gain traction on that. But it is the cryptocurrency before Bitcoin that is most similar to it. Over a decade after most of these experiments, Bitcoin finally released as the next promising attempt at a cryptocurrency. On October 31st, 2008, a document titled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system was published by someone with the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto describing their system for permissionless electronic payments without relying on trust, but rather math and cryptography. The white paper was emailed to people on the cypherpunk mailing list to help spread the news and hopefully attract talent to help fix the code and develop the project into a success. After a few months, the source code was made available to the public and Satoshi began running the blockchain and mining blocks. And then it didn't take long for others to join simply out of interest for the project and much less about the speculation for future profits. This was the start of a financial revolution during the aftermath of a financial crisis. Coincidence? In the very first block that was mined, Satoshi Nakamoto embedded custom data, which included a message reading, The Times, January 3rd, 2009, Chancellor on brink of second bailout for banks. There's no doubt that this was a hint at the purpose for this new form of currency from a system that requires no permission or trust and has had an undeniable influence on the world today. The 170th block was the first to contain an actual transaction, which was Satoshi Nakamoto sending Bitcoins to Hal Finney, an early Bitcoin developer who was among the first to learn about Bitcoin from Satoshi sending the white paper and a message to an email list of cypherpunks, which he was a part of. The earliest known purchase for a physical good using Bitcoin was for two pizzas in 2010 for 10,000 Bitcoins, which at the time was just $35 but now is worth $160,000. And in the Bitcoin community, this is celebrated on May 22nd and is known as Bitcoin Pizza Day. At the very beginning, Satoshi started out by mining almost all the blocks himself and also had given themselves more computing capabilities compared to the early miners in order to maintain control of the network so that they can gradually step down as more miners came online. It had to start out more centralized. Satoshi gave themselves over 50% of the total mining power of the network with their special client, which allowed for them to use multi-threading for their CPU while mining Bitcoins. This can be seen in the chart illustrated and explained by Sergio Lerner in this bits log forum post where he explains these lines with the greater slope that are black representing faster mining were in fact Satoshi. This advantage at the start was not for personal selfish reasons, but to prevent the blockchain from potentially being hijacked from a group of supercomputers that join the network and start mining a majority of the transactions, leading to the ability to falsely alter the network. This is what's considered a 51% attack, and this problem exists because of the model of Bitcoin, which essentially puts trust in the incentivized majority. But Satoshi didn't have to worry about this for long once more miners joined over time. And Lerner, in another one of his posts, showed that Satoshi stopped mining in May of 2010, all of a sudden disappearing, and hasn't mined a single block since. The identity of Satoshi Nakamoto remains unknown to this day, after having created the first mainstream digital alternative to money that is still being used. This is a currency that rivals government-issued money, and is feared by many people in power because of its resistance to regulation. Bitcoin is a decentralized monetary system that runs on code, and it can be thought of as a global network of databases where there is no permission required to participate. As I already mentioned, with Satoshi having been responsible for mining the majority of blocks at the beginning of Bitcoin's existence, they accumulated 1 million Bitcoins, just under 5% of the total supply, which have never been moved from the wallet in which they were initially rewarded from mining, and that would mean that Satoshi's Bitcoin stash is currently worth $17 billion at the time of making this video. If the price of a Bitcoin were to reach over $200,000, 
which is certainly in the realm of possibilities and I imagine would happen someday, then whoever Satoshi is would become the richest person in the world based on today's leaders with Elon Musk being worth $200 billion. The richest man in the world being completely anonymous would certainly scare the hell out of a lot of people and governments. And many people like myself would see it as inspiring that someone would create software, give it to the world for free, and then walk away after doing enough to allow it to become what it is today, the most popular digital currency in the world. It's incredible to think that this fortune has sat in the same wallet untouched for over a decade. I already explained how it happened, but now the question is, why has Satoshi decided not to touch any of their Bitcoin? This could be for a variety of reasons. Maybe Satoshi is waiting to cash in, see how things play out, and maybe they can get a lot more for their tokens. Or they don't want to interfere with the balance of the market and remain completely out of the way of its natural growth. Selling would most likely lead to the collapse of Bitcoin's price, not just because a large fraction of the supply would be dumped on the market at once if they chose to do this, but because people would know about this transfer happening from the original Satoshi wallet proven to be theirs. And this would lead to people believing that either Satoshi has lost faith in the project or that they were just in it for personal gain and was finally cashing in their fortune. Or Satoshi could choose to burn the coins by sending them to a designated burn wallet address, which is proven to not be in the control of anyone. This would mean they could not sell their coins and it would be taken out of circulation forever. And it would cut the Bitcoin supply by almost 5% and make the new total supply 20 million instead of 21 million. Everyone would know that their coins had been burned, it would make headlines, and investors would see it as a bullish signal since the supply has been pretty much changed and the price would be severely impacted. I doubt Satoshi would want this. Other reasons for why they haven't moved their tokens could be that they just lost their keys or they're dead. Now onto who could be Satoshi Nakamoto. Well, many people have claims to be Satoshi Nakamoto, obviously for the fame, but there's no one that has fooled as many people as Craig Wright, who was an Australian computer scientist who tried to provide evidence by signing a message using the keys to an address thought to be owned by Satoshi, but his claim was later debunked, and he's also led the effort to a spin-off version of Bitcoin, or also known as a fork, called Bitcoin Satoshi Vision. Wright still claims to be Satoshi, but he's made much fewer public appearances after getting challenged by many not just online, but in person while at conferences and other events. The next suspect is Dorian Nakamoto. Now, that sounds familiar, because Dorian's full name is Dorian Satoshi Nakamoto. And that's really the only evidence that people have on him being the Satoshi of Bitcoin. And it's also very unlikely that the mastermind behind Bitcoin just simply forgot this most obvious step, such a critical failure in hiding his identity. I think that's quite unlikely. But there is one really interesting piece of evidence that is tied to him and relating to someone else on this list but I'll get to that in a minute. Adam Back was one of the early cypherpunks, and he was the first to implement proof of work, the consensus mechanism on Bitcoin, in a working protocol which he used for preventing spam emails, called Hashcash. And he was also referenced in Satoshi's Bitcoin white paper, where he explicitly said, the proof of work algorithm from Hashcash was an inspiration for Bitcoin. Next up is Nick Sabo, and he's considered by many experts to be one of the most qualified to create Bitcoin. He made bit gold in the late 90s, and his writing style was also found to be similar to Satoshi's from blog posts and forums. And the final and most likely candidate for who could be Satoshi is Hal Finney. He improved on Sabo's proof of work algorithm. He was an early cypherpunk cryptographer as well, who worked closely with Satoshi and even received the very first Bitcoin transaction. Now things really get interesting because he lived very close to Dorian Nakamoto, Dorian Satoshi Nakamoto, and this could have easily been the inspiration and what gave him the idea for the alias name Satoshi. Unfortunately, he suffered from ALS, which his condition sadly worsened, and interestingly, in a time frame that is very similar to the gradual disappearance of Satoshi. Whether or not Satoshi is alive today, it's been an absolutely incredible story having released this technology into the world and having it unfold like it has over the last decade. We've seen adoption in the form of retail investors, institutions, governments, and it started out as a currency that many associated with crime and drug dealers. Eventually, the public narrative moved away from crime and saw it more as just an internet currency for computer geeks. And then leading up to 2017, people started to see it more as an alternative asset 
though it had a volatile price, it had vast appreciation over time and very good fundamental technology backing it. And then starting in around 2020, we saw it integrated into apps like PayPal, Venmo, and Cash App. Companies started to announce that they had bought Bitcoin for their balance sheets and treasuries. And governments were beginning to recognize Bitcoin as a real currency with El Salvador being the first. Bitcoin doesn't need government's approval as a real currency. People can use it regardless but it certainly does help, of course, when they recognize it as legal tender. We are hearing more and more stories of people using Bitcoin to escape the poorly managed, corrupted, or extremely inflated monetary systems and governments of oftentimes lesser developed countries. Satoshi Nakamoto was an incredible and absolutely essential part of this financial revolution that we're seeing unfold. And I'm really not mad that Satoshi could end up being the richest person in the world. If Bitcoin really takes over the world, then that sort of makes sense. And shoot, that's a 5% fee. And we'll have to see if those 1 million Bitcoins ever get moved. But for now, they remain untouched. That's all I got for this video. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.